So the reading today is from Mark's Gospel, and it tells about Jesus calming the stormy seas. The disciples are understandably fearful and are amazed that even the seas listen to their teacher. So Mark 4, 35 to 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. There were other boats with them. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not even care that we are perishing? Upon waking, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Be silent, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Good morning, I'm Pastor Emily Lazurkot. I'm a spiritual director here in town and it's a joy to get to worship with y'all here today. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? I'm struck this morning by the panic and desperation of the disciples crying out for Jesus to save them from death and absolute chaos. Because that's what we see this morning in our gospel text, right? The mysterious power of God in Jesus to interrupt and reset the course of chaos. This is near the beginning of Jesus' ministry still. His disciples have seen him do miracles, but they've all been miracles that are, you know, heretofore completely, they're not completely unheard of. Miracles of the healing people of diseases or casting out demons variety. But this, telling the wind to cease its blowing and the waves to cease their churning, this is power of a different sort. This power feels more elemental, commanding the forces of nature to bend to the will of Jesus, this new religious teacher. At this point in our story, the disciples aren't quite sure who Jesus is yet, right? They're still figuring it out. They certainly have not voiced the belief that Jesus might be God. I can only imagine that the power, and, and our text tells us, right, the power of God in Jesus to calm the chaos of creation in that moment had to have been awe-inspiring and definitely terrifying. Because if Jesus can do this, what else can he do? This is a level of power certainly never seen by the generation of people with whom Jesus is working and teaching. Seeing this power of Jesus at work with the elements of creation terrified the disciples, that's what we read. As they were only slowly, step by step, coming to know Jesus in all his fullness as Messiah, the Son of God, a member of what we might call the Holy Trinity, Heavenly Parent, Son, and Holy Spirit. The disciples' perspective on this situation was a bit different from ours today, right? We have the benefit of hearing the story after the fact, when we already know who Jesus is, God's Messiah, sent to rescue all humanity and all creation from death and darkness. Though the disciples were terrified by Jesus' ability to command the elements, to us, this is just another example 
Another example of the power of God at work in the world, right? As followers of Jesus now, 2,000 years or so later, we get to hear this story and take heart. We get to be encouraged and empowered as we weather the chaos around us because we know Jesus and we know his power to speak peace into chaos. But the disciples don't know this about Jesus yet. They didn't know that the power of his command would make peace, would bring order to the chaos. All the disciples knew was that they were about to drown and Jesus was seemingly okay with that. He was just gonna let it happen. So they cried out, teacher, do you not care? We are perishing. If I'm being honest, over the years of hearing this story, I have lost the desperation of the disciples' experience in it. And they were desperate. They would have died if Jesus had kept sleeping. If he had not set force or set straight the forces of creation to save them. The disciples did not shy away from calling Jesus out to save them. And I, I imagine him like sleeping in a boat and them like shaking him awake, screaming in terror, begging him to act. When I sink into this story from the disciples' perspective, imagining them screaming and shaking him in their terror, calling out because there was literally nothing else they could do at this point, I start to really feel the life in the story. That is to say, the experience of the disciples starts to feel relatable. I don't know about you, but God and I have had some serious crying, screaming, praying sessions lately about children dying by the thousands in Gaza, about violence overtaking Darfur again, about legislation that dehumanizes queer, trans, and non-binary folks and even threatens their lives. We are all dealing with these horrors on a daily basis. And it's not just those big things, right? It's dealing with those big things amidst struggling to pay for childcare and groceries, <laughs> um, amidst any of the other daily struggles of health or anything we're dealing with in our own person and our family. It's the chaos of our own hearts struggling to survive amidst all the outward chaos. Just like the disciples experience on that boat caught up in that windstorm, our world is full of perilous chaos. Honestly, I'm a bit jealous of the disciples. Um, I wish Jesus was physically in front of me here so that I could yell at him and shake him awake and get him to act. Clearly, I'm about 2,000 years too late uh, to do that. <laughs> but I have, we all have something that the disciples didn't yet, right? We have the Holy Spirit, the creative force that hovered over the waters in the beginning in you and in me as followers of Jesus. The Spirit of God the divine comforter and advocate that Jesus promised to send in his stead, and it's come, right, is within and amongst us as followers of Jesus. And I'm not saying this to try to be Pollyannish, like the world's, you know, a dumpster fire, but we have the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm saying it to remind us and to empower us that the power of Jesus that spoke order into chaos on that boat resides within us as his followers today. And we get to work. We're invited to work with the Spirit of God. We get to wield that power to help bring order to chaos. I have witnessed, and I'm sure you all have too, chaotic things seemingly outside of our control miraculously change through God's power. The cancer that was present one day is gone the next, much to the disbelief and confusion of the doctors. The tree that was dead <laughs> suddenly blooms. 
The scoliosis ravaged back that had been that way for decades is suddenly made straight after a night of healing prayer. Obviously, sometimes the prayers don't work the way we hoped. I've also had dear people die of the cancer that didn't miraculously disappear, even though many of us were crying and screaming and for all intents and purposes, shaking Jesus, praying for healing. Just as we've all experienced miracles, we have all experienced times when our prayers didn't come to fruition, when healing didn't happen. These are painful, complicated experiences that I'm not going to try to explain away right now. My only hope is that in these times, we can share that load of grief with each other, that we'll grieve together and wrestle with God about God's seeming inaction. But here is my hope with this story today, that this example we've been given of Jesus' power to bring order and peace into chaos, to rescue those who are perishing, will encourage and empower us in the midst of our current chaos. Because it's when we can really sink into stories like this, when we witness Jesus's elemental, miraculous power, that we are inspired and emboldened to ask God to work in bigger ways, to do even greater things, to bring order and peace into chaos. So I ask us this morning, what storms are we currently weathering? Outwardly and within our own hearts, in our families, in our friend groups, in our worshiping communities. Let us boldly ask God to intervene to save us in the world from perishing just as Jesus intervened to save the disciples. And then, of course, we do our part, right? We do what we can to order the chaos. We don't just sit in our closets, right, and pray. But we can't forget the key piece of approaching the throne of God with confidence, asking and expecting that God will act. I trust this morning that God will act to calm the storms we are all experiencing. May it be so.